According to Robin Williams, the word Jumanji is a Zulu word that, when translated into English, actually means many effects. Whether this is actually correct or not, we don't know. However, what we do know is that the movie Jumanji did indeed have many effects. Pushing the limits of what was possible with special and visual effects at the time, not only did Jumanji have more puppets and animatronics than Jurassic Park, but it also had over double the computer effects, more than 12 minutes, and a much wider variety of style of effects. So in this video, we're going to explore some of those detailed models and sets like the overgrown vine set or the house splitting in two, complicated puppets, animatronics, and well, I suppose you could call this plantatronics, and some incredible digital effects. For this warping effect, Industrial Light and Magic didn't actually have any proper scans or measurements of the actor's hands, so they got the production company to send them a Xerox of the actor putting his hands on the photocopier's glass. ILM even spent three months developing two groundbreaking software programs. One was called iSculpt and was used to create realistic facial expressions, and the other was for creating realistic digital hair and fur for the awesome CG lion. And for these um, not so awesome monkeys. Yeah. Designing the look for all the animals took months of research, hundreds of photographs, and numerous sketches before they managed to find the correct balance between amusing and threatening, which was both wild enough to scare the audience and still tame enough to achieve a family friendly rating. Now, the standard mantra for most movies is usually get as much in camera as you can. So during the design process, they also had to assess which animal could be a physical puppet and captured in camera, and which had to be CGI. And animals that had to move around but also had close-up beauty shots or had to interact with the cast were both animatronics and CGI. The lion was one of these digital practical hybrids. They built the lion with an animatronic head that could be controlled by external operators whilst the front paws were controlled by a creature performer. The performer was concealed inside the lion and wore a headset with LCD screens in order to see how he was moving. The entire puppet was then supported by a crane on a dolly that it could be moved around on. The animatronic lion was used for the close-up and facial expression shots, and the CG version was used for the shots that required full body movement. If you stop to look for it, you can actually see the transitions between the two quite clearly in this scene. We start with an animatronic model, here too, now it's CGI, back to animatronics, and back to CGI. Now here, if we slow it down, you can see just how good their new fur tool was. There are around 1.5 million individual hairs on this lion, and the two minutes of total screen time that the CG lion has took five months to complete. Now, I know you're thinking, if they were able to make the CG lion look so good, why did they leave these monkeys looking so bad? Well, the short answer is that back when the movie was made, they just couldn't possibly make them look any better. And the main reasons for this were lighting and reference. For the lion scene, they had an animatronic puppet that they could use as a lighting reference on set. The scene also occurs inside a house under controlled lighting conditions. This meant that even though there were parts of the lion, like this rear leg here, that didn't quite sit right in the shot, they could be hidden in shadow. The monkeys, however, were a completely different story. Even though maquettes were made to define the monkey's look, there was no puppet that they could use for lighting reference, and the monkeys themselves mainly appeared outdoors in broad daylight with little or no shadows to hide their flaws. Unlike the lion, which just had to walk, run and jump, the monkeys had to steal a police car, ride a motorbike and smash up an entire kitchen. This called for a much wider range of movement for which the animators had little or no real world reference. For the lion, they found footage of a real lion walking and animated the CG one by mimicking its movements. This made the animation process a lot easier and gave a much more convincing result. But finding footage of a lion walking is pretty easy. Finding footage of monkeys riding a motorbike, that's a lot harder to come by. All this becomes apparent in the kitchen scene. 
Here the monkeys actually look pretty good, and no way near as jarring as they do in the external shots. This is because the practical effects going on in the shot give the CG monkeys something to interact with and help them form part of the scene. Each monkey is carrying out a simple short movement, and that makes it much easier to animate and more convincing, and the interior lighting environment is more controlled and therefore easier to make the monkeys sit well within the shot. Although the monkeys weren't the only animals that were 100% CGI, all the animals in the stampede sequence were also computer generated. The sequence starts with the rhino smashing through the library wall. This was actually done by first filming one plate of Robin running back to get the game, then building a massive blue rhino and smashing it through the wall, and then isolating Robin and compositing him along with the CG rhinos into the final shot. The stampede sequence then continues through the house and into the street. Here, ILM created the most memorable shot in the entire film. This shot was so good that not only did it have the general public wondering whether or not a real elephant had been used, but ILM actually reused it as a VFX test shot to convince Tim Burton that the aliens in Mars Attacks should be CGI instead of stop motion. Now, as we said before, Jumanji had many effects and they weren't just limited to the animals. In fact, perhaps the biggest and most complicated effect was actually the parish house in New Hampshire, which wasn't actually in New Hampshire and wasn't just one house. You see, for the exterior establishing shots, a false facade was actually built on an empty lot in British Columbia, Vancouver. The interior sets were built at Bridge Studios in British Columbia, and they were designed to cater to the effects that had to happen within. Scale models were built to plan and visualize how an effect would look and be achieved. The individual room sets were built as separate modules to allow the effects crew to have access to every part. And the entire ground floor set had to be built inside a large tank at the University of British Columbia that they use for wave research. Its construction had to be strong enough to resist the pressure of two meters of water and the strong winds generated by the monsoon. Oh, and the massive 15 feet long animatronic crocodile that was thrashing about in it. The split house set was a combination of a miniature model, CGI, the main physical set, and the attic set that was designed to be torn in two. The model was used to achieve the actual effect of the house splitting in two. The main set was designed to have the central part dismantled, but the attic part of the set was actually designed to be pulled apart just after the quicksand scene. The initial quicksand effect was CGI, but this part is just Robin pushing his head through a hole in a rubber plank. As you can see, the plank flexes as he speaks. And if you look closely in the actual movie, you can see it move just here. And later on, you can even see right here the lines where the set is designed to separate. So we go from rubber floor and separating attic set to the miniature model to the dismantled main set and this earthquake camera shake that you see throughout the scene, if you look right here, was created by this motor spinning an eccentric weight. So, as you can see, as Jurassic Park did beforehand, Jumanji required both a wide variety of creatures to do some pretty extravagant things, and some pretty extravagant solutions to a wide variety of problems. However, in Jumanji, the process was a lot harder to achieve and much more complicated. Because whereas Jurassic Park hid its effects in the shadows, Jumanji brought its effects out into the light.